All right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and I'm starting a brand new topic, that being databases. Not sure exactly how I'm going to do this and where we're going to get where we're going to go, but the plan at least is uh, for this lecture, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to talk about some fundamental database terminology, and then I'm going to show you how to go and load a product that you can use to simulate your own database server. From there, I plan at least on going on and talking some about MySQL and eventually transi transitioning over to C Sharp and SQL Server, but that's a ways off. So, as we get going, I'd like to give you, and again, this, this is my terminology. You're probably not going to find most of this stuff in a book, but it's just what I use. All right, so the first thing is, you know, it literally. what is a character <clears throat> and I just define that as being any character on your keyboard in other words alpha numeric and special characters and special characters are anything that's not an alphabetic character A through Z and it's not a numeric character, 0 through 9. All right. And I'm going to build my way up here. So next is a field. And a field is one or more related characters. And sometimes people hear that and they go, one character? Well, yeah, what if you had a field that was called middle initial? All right. So a field is one or more related characters. A record is one or more related fields. So for instance, I might have a record that might have my first name, middle initial, last name, address, city, state, zip, etc. Okay? A table is one or more related records. So again, as an example, I'm an I'm a an instructor. I have classes that have students. If I took every one of my students and I took all of, you know, for each student I took their first name, middle initial, last name, address, city, state, zip, that would be a table. Finally you've got a database. And that's one or more related tables. Right? You put all that stuff together and you can see we're building our way up. So fields are characters. They consist of characters. Records consist of fields. Tables consist of records. Databases consist of tables. Just a couple more quick definitions here. Primary key. Unique record identifier. All right. Now, sometimes primary keys may seem obvious and they may not be. What do I mean? Well, some people think, oh, a unique record identifier. You mean like a social security number. That is a bad field to use for a primary key. We'll talk about how to create our own, okay, in just a bit. And then we'll talk about foreign keys. I guess that was spelled right. And with a foreign key, what you end up doing is you put the primary key, I shouldn't say put, how about add? You add the primary key of one table in as a field in another table. Now I'm running out of room here as you can see. <clears throat> I'm going to shrink this down just a little bit. All right. So why would you have a <clears throat> why would you have a foreign key? It allows you to create relationships between tables. 
All right, one more definition and then we're going to really, really get started in earnest. So, databases are made up of tables. Tables are made up of records. Records are made up of fields. Fields are made up of characters. Every table should have a primary key, a unique record identifier. Oftentimes, you will have foreign keys as well. All right? Now I'm going to put in here RD. How about this? How about relational? In fact, let's go for relational. And let's, let's see. Let's try Wikipedia. And I'm going to put in here relational. And you notice they've got a bunch of different stuff in here, relational capital, relational this, relational that. I'm going to go to relational database. And they say it's a digital database. That's not really that important. Whose organization is based on the relational model of data. But what is the relational model of data? It's actually something that was first created in around 1970 by a mathematician named E.F. Codd. Notice, all data is represented in terms of tuples grouped into relations. Tuples are what I called records. But the big thing here is the idea of relations. And we're going to get into that in just a couple minutes. And going along with that, a relational database management system. Again, remember, these are my definitions, all right? So with relational, you are able to relate different tables together using relationships. And again, if that doesn't make any sense, we're going to get into it in more depth and breadth of coverage a little bit in a little bit. Finally, a DBMS. And a DBMS is a database management system. Again, remember, I'm giving you my definitions here, so they may not totally jive with what you'd get if you went out to Wikipedia or what you'd get if you looked at a different textbook, etc. All right? And what a DBMS is, a database management system, it allows you to add data, modify data, and remove data. Now, Collectively, sometimes this is referred to as CRUD. CRUD means create, remove. No, it's not remove. Uh, I'm trying to remember what the R is in CRUD. Read. Read. Update and delete. You take the first letter of each one of those together and you get CRUD. All right? So a database management system allows you to basically control your data by allowing you to add data, modify data, and remove data. Two more definitions, and I promise I'm finished. The first will be DDL. Again, another acronym, it stands for Data Definition Language. And what DDL allows you to do to create database schema. If you've never heard of that before, you're going to see it in an upcoming lecture, in fact, very, very quickly. The commands that we associate with DDL are create, 
alter, and delete. They don't have to be an uppercase like this, all right, but that's what I'm using. And then there's DML, and that's data manipulation language. And as it said, it allows you to manipulate database data. And the keywords in that are select, update, insert, and delete. And I've got a mistake up here. This is not delete. This is drop. Finally, when you put all this stuff together, DBMS, DDL, DML, etc., it's important to discuss the word SQL. And that stands for Structured Query Language, sometimes pronounced SQL. Depends. Everybody's different in the way that they say stuff. So if I come back here and I come back one more time and I put in here SQL, the domain specific language used in programming and designing, designed for managing data held in a relational database management system. That's actually a, a pretty good definition. domain specific language used in programming and designed for managing data in an RDBMS that we just talked about. All right, I think that's enough for right now. I'm at 12 minutes. I think I will stop right here, but I want to review one more time. These are some major database definitions. A character I defined as anything on your keyboard. Alpha, numeric, or special characters. A field is one or more related characters. So as small as one character, like a middle initial field, as large as maybe hundreds of characters for an email field, for example. A record is one or more related fields. For instance, your record might be your name, your first name, your middle name, your address, city, state, zip, etc. If I take and put together the information, the records of many people, I could have a table. If I put together the, the many tables that I might create, and if they're all related to one another, I have a database. Now, ideally, when you create these tables, they'll have primary keys, which are a unique record identifier. We'll talk much more about that as we go on. You also have foreign keys, where you add the primary key of one table as a field in another table. It allows you to create relationships. Some of the relationships we'll talk about are one-to-one. -one. One to many, which is the one we are going to strive for, and many to many. All right. We talked a little bit about relational. As it says, the ability to be able to relate different tables together using relationships. This act of doing things in a relational manner is one of the keys to RDBMS, which I didn't even put in here. So an RDBMS is a relational da database management system. So we saw the DBMS, and RDBMS is relational. I also mentioned very quickly the two main kinds of languages that we're going to be using in here, those being DDL, data definition language, which is more concerned with the schema, the underlying way that the data is set up in the database. And the key words for that are create, alter, and drop. 
Then we look quickly at data manipulation language to manipulate the database data, select, update, insert, and delete. Finally, the last thing we talked about in here was structured query language, pronounced SQL at times at least. Again, a language used in programming and design for managing data held in relational database management systems. I do want you to understand that relational database management systems are approximately, they're almost 50 years old. And I don't know about you, but I can't think of too many things in the information technology industry that have lasted for 50 years and are still going as strong as the relational, you know, the relational model is going. All right? So I'm going to come back in just a couple minutes with my second lecture in this series. And in this second lecture, what I plan on doing is installing a product that is called XAMP. And there are many products similar to XAMP, but XAMP is the one I'm going to use. So let me save this to my desktop. I'm going to create a folder called Database. And I'm going to put in here, call this Common Terminology. All right, so I'll be back to talk about XAMP in just a couple.